Hello and welcome to another video. This is on the syncing and MIDI control that I am using for my synth jams. It's a very, very versatile and a very simple way of controlling instruments and controlling the beats per minute or clock or tempo throughout the system. Now this, uh, this system is not really a system for the tweakers, but they could use it. They could use it. But I'm using a lot of my keyboard skills and timing as a musician to bring in arpeggiators to actually hit buttons in time or to tap tempo in time to instruments. So the, the, uh, the sync is not extremely locked. And that is the difference between this setup and having everything just absolutely perfectly synced where you can't even uh, you can't even get in there and adjust it if you wanted it to. So I have I have four different scenarios that I'm going to bring up here. And then we're going to go over to the keyboards and uh, I'm going to demonstrate it. So these uh, this uh, diagram here, this first one, it's called MIDI Connections. And this one, I'm having the Casio XWP1, as you can see. The red lines are only MIDI cables. The audio and power cables are not in here. I did another video on audio that will explain that. So all we're talking about today is, is the MIDI control of instruments through either notes, transferring notes from one keyboard to the next, or transferring clock speed from one and clock timing from one speed to the next, or one instrument to the next. So in this diagram here, I am using the Casio as my clock and my controller. So we have the red line coming out of the Casio. That's the MIDI cabled out. And we are not talking USB here. All we're talking is the five pin MIDI DIN or DIN cable. It's the simplest most effective way of hooking up instruments. Uh, the reason I hate using computers is if I was to hook this into the computer and bring it back out, my computer is too slow and I'm going to get delay. I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to push a key down on the keyboard and it's going to be delayed and I cannot stand playing that way. So between that and ditching the uh, and having a computer die on me that had XP and I replaced it with another computer with Windows 7 and having the audio interface become absolutely useless then. The audio and MIDI interface from my computer on XP only su was supported by XP. It was old enough where no drivers were available for Windows 7. So after throwing out that perfectly good piece of hardware I decided not to do computer recording anymore. I still have my computer and my DAW where I can bring WAV files in from my external recorder, but uh, that's something I do for, for very special projects where I want to fine tune. I don't want to go through that much hassle for putting up these quickie type uh, sync jams. So let's get back to the MIDI. And on this case, we are talking just the red lines or MIDI cable. And I have a what's called a MIDI through box by MIDI Solutions. Very simple box, no power going to it. Just I, I one in, which bring splits it out into four outs. So the four outs are identical to what's coming in. So if I'm sending all channels in 1 through 16 on Omni, then all channels are coming out. If I'm sending channel 1 in, then all are coming out. And if I'm sending in clock speed or, or a clock MIDI, uh, uh, the clock MIDI, which would, in the case of the XWP1, when I turn on the step sequencer, it immediately sends out a tempo of whatever tempo I have set. So, for example, if I have a 100 beats per minute tempo set, it's going to set out, send out that clock speed and 100 beats per minute to all my external MIDI gear. So, we're sending out, I'm sending out channel 1 in this case, and 
I will be turning on and off the step sequencer to send out the clock. So what I'm sending out is obviously just channel one and clock. So what's receiving on the other end is a, again according to what MIDI implementation these other instruments have. Now most instruments have a, a very vast MIDI implementation so we are using MIDI in the in the most simplest sense right now. All we're using is the is the clock out and a MIDI channel out. So I have the options after this goes out to my other instruments as to how these MIDI signals are going to be received by the ch by the other. So at the very top I have a Yamaha Reface DX7. Next one down is the Roland Boutique G JPO8. The one below that is the JX03 Roland Boutique and the one below that is the Roland Gaia. So the boutiques have a number of options too. So let's do a let's do a sample setup here. Let's say let's say the uh, the uh, DX7 at the top is only receiving note data. So I'm actually playing the DX7 from the XP1's keyboard. And for the boutique JP08 below that the same thing. It's going to receive on channel 1, just as the DX7 is going to receive on channel 1, note data. So I'm going, to, and note data will include any pedal changes too. So if I'm using a sustain pedal, that gets transferred right along with everything else all over that single MIDI channel 1. Now below that, the, the uh, JP or the JX03 boutique, let's rig, I'm going to rig that one. Uh, not to, to uh, I'm going to bring that uh, receiving channel to number two, so it does not receive note channels. And then I'm going to turn the clock external, in which makes it a uh, a slave to the clock of the XWP1. So these are settings I'm setting inside the JX03. So I'm setting this up not to receive well. It would only receive uh, MIDI note data, the, the notes I play on the keyboard. It would only receive that on channel 2. So since I'm not chan sending on channel 2, only on channel 1, it gets no note data. But as soon as I hit the step sequencer, it's going to receive the clock data and it's going to start the internal sequence sequencer on this, uh, on, on the uh, JX03, it's going to start whatever sequencer I have selected. And below that, um, uh, I've got the, uh, I've got it hooked up to the, uh, to the Roland. So on the Roland, I'm going to again set that one for receiving on MIDI channel 2, so it receives no Nate, don't, uh, it does not receive note data, but it receives clock data. That way, anything I do on an arpeggiator will be timed exactly to the same beats per minute as is on running on the XWP1. So to recap how we're going to run this first one, I'm controlling the DX7, the Reface, the Reface uh, FM synthesizer on top, that one's going to get notes, so as soon as I play something on the keyboard, it's going to play the notes. Also, the JP08 is going to receive notes, but I'm going to have the sequencer or uh, the sequencer on there turn to internal so it does not receive the clock data. And the one below it will receive the clock data, but not the MIDI notes. The uh, JX the JX03 Boutique below the JP is going to receive only clock data, which is going to run a sequence that I have stored on the JX03. And below that, the Gaia is only going to receive clock data, and it's only going to play those if I'm running anything that requires timing, such as an arpeggiator. So I'm still free to play the keyboard on the, on the Gaia without any interruption. So let's uh, let's give that one 
Let's give that one a go, and we'll go over to the uh, instruments and play this this configuration. Hello and welcome to the video on syncing up multiple keyboards for a synth jam. Today we're linking up the, the Casio XWP1, the Gaia from Roland, and the two boutiques from Roland, the Jupiter 8 and the JX03, or the JPO8 as it's called here. And we're down here we got the Yamaha Reface DX, with the, which is the FM synthesizer. And now in this configuration, like you've seen on the chart, it's all being controlled basically from the Casio. We're using the Casio for the step sequence, and we're using the Casio as a MIDI control for, uh, for the uh, JP08, and for I can switch back and forth if I want to the, uh, to the Yamaha Reface too. So right now, you're now listening to the, the uh, Roland JP08 as it's MIDI cabled in. And over here you'll see the, the MIDI through box that's, that makes this all possible. This back of it is showing the one input in, and that is the MIDI out from the Casio to the MIDI in of the through box. And then out of here, I have four outputs that I've sent to the Boutiques, F2, and the, the Reface has one. I only have three outputs hooked up right now. The Gaia does not accept clock speed from the... Uh, from the Casio and probably doesn't accept any clock speed. So it's running independent. So that's why I only have three outputs. So right now I'm controlling the JP08. I turn that down and we got nothing going on. But the internal sound of the Casio is a synth. There's the internal of the Casio, and the reface. So here I am playing the playing the Yamaha reface from this keyboard because it's MIDI cabled in too, and anything that's accepting channel one, which I'm outputting from here, if it's receiving channel one, then it's accepting the keyboard notes. So on the JX03, you hear nothing, because I have these all set up a little different to how to receive. J, the JP08 is receiving MIDI note signals, but it is not receiving clock data. So here's the sequence they're running on the Casio, and I've got the JP uh, to receive clock turned off. So now it's independent. It's not it's not kicking off the built-in sequencer. But it is taking it is taking the MIDI notes. This one's just the opposite. It's not taking the MIDI notes, but it is accepting the clock. So so that bass sound you're hearing is coming from the JX03. Now the reface I've got set up on channel 2 so it doesn't receive it doesn't receive notes from the MIDI 
but it is receiving the clock. Now this doesn't have an arpeggiator and it doesn't have a sequencer, but it has a built-in looper. And the looper will run at the clock speed that's being sent to it. So now, it's not receiving the MIDI notes, but it is receiving the clock. If I change the MIDI channel, if I change the MIDI channel back to one, it will now re run the run the clock and the and the built-in looper, but it'll also accept key notes. And that's being controlled by the MIDI channels. So this is just basically sending out one and then how each one of these each one of these three is receiving that channel one is what's making uh, this configuration work. Now I can configure it any way I want. I can I can have the, just the opposite. I can have everything receiving MIDI clock and then not even play the keyboard and then you can just tweak all day long if you want. that's all those are all synced and timed and will come on as soon as I hit the step sequencer now the Roland since it's not receiving clock I will have to uh, I got to sync it somehow to this to the uh, rhythm now this rhythm is running at a uh, tempo of 70 beats per minute so let's let's see what the Roland's running at Okay, it's already, it's already synced, but if it was out of sync, obviously too fast. So now I need to tap in this beaded tempo. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. So now I've matched the 70 beats to the 70 to 70 beats on the Gaia. Now my my uh, Gaia should play in time. So let's get this one going. Now when I play the Gaia and start the arpeggio, I have to press the keys down right at the beginning of the beat. Otherwise it won't line up. And that's where the musician skills come in. Bring in the bells. Notice when I turned the sequencer off, the, the rolling kept going because it is not connected in any way to anything else. We are manually, manually triggering the arpeggios in time and in the same beat. So now I got the keys set up to play the internal of the of the uh, Casio and the JP both at the same time. They're both playing together. So I got that layered together. So let's uh, let's get the sequence started. Step in with this one.
one example. Now, the CASR also has an arpeggiator, and the arpeggiator will send out note data. So if I use the arpeggiator on the Casio, it will not influence the JX03, which is on. It's only being triggered by the sequencer. Now this isn't being triggered by the sequencer, it's being triggered by notes, but the notes on the arpeggiator will work it. So what you're hearing is the Casio transmitting note number one out to the JP. It's also it can also trigger the internal sound. Or you can combine them. did there is started the arpeggio on the Casio and since the sequencer is already there that's already timed perfectly. So now I got the Casio playing its its internal sound along with the JP08 on channel one and I turned I turned this looper off on this and just soloed this synth. Soloed the FM bells all by themselves. And the same thing can be done with this. The arpeggio can be turned off. So, I'm not stuck in any kind of really 16 step sequence because the, uh, the sequence the Casio is doing, I've got eight, I can set up eight different sequences and at a push of a button just send it off into another sequence. And of course the arpeggios you play can be, uh, can be a, a changing chord structures, it can be anything you want to. So I'm thinking you're seeing it's a simple MIDI setup for the most part, but I've given myself a huge amount of play in how I can set my sequence up. Now, these can be set up in any way. I can be triggering arpeggiators here. I can be playing notes. I can be playing the other keyboard on solo. Can be triggering arpeggiators from here. Now on the on the charts you also saw the Yamaha here. The Yamaha is a ranger, so it has built-in rhythms too. So I've already set this up to the 70 tempo. I don't have to tap in anything here because I have a tempo control. So the arpeggiators on here can also be timed with the Casio. Now with the Casio, there's no latch, but I have a pedal, and the pedal controls 
can control when the arpeggio comes out. So I got my foot pressed on the pedal. Because the Yamaha is a rhythm machine too, I can arm this to take its rhythm and sync it with the Casio. Ranger, I can change chords.
And there's a look at all the automation in step sequence and in the arpeggiators. But you can still use your musician skills to actually run your own arpeggiators if you want. that explains uh, the drawings a little easier and gives you an idea of what's going on here. This way you don't need any complex uh, sequencing. You just sequence and arpeggiate on the fly and you have it all set up beforehand to match the synth jam you're doing for that day. Hello and then on this, uh, this next configuration where we have the Korg Electribe 2 sending clock data, the red lines, out to the same instruments that the Casio was controlling before. So in this case I would simply unplug, I would physically unplug the Casio from the MIDI through box and plug the Korg into it. Thus the Korg is sending clock data to any of the instruments. But the Korg can also send MIDI channel data too it has 16 pads and 16 MIDI channels. So if, if one of the instruments are set up to receive, such as MIDI channel 1 on track 1 of the Korg Electribe, I can actually use the pads to beat in note data and uh, it will sequence that note data on the, on the fly as a record. So this, this is another scenario of, of uh, Swap, you know, swapping out the uh, the through box from the Casio to the Korg Electribe. Now I'm not going to uh, use this. Uh, I'm not going to show you a musical demonstration of this because it's a, it's basically the same as what we've just did with the Casio XWP1. The only difference is on this diagram is I have a green line, and that is indicating the the uh, MIDI out of the electribe or the, the MIDI in of the electribe is coming from the MIDI out of the reface uh, DX. The Yamaha D, uh, DX at the top with the green line is actually going, feeding a MIDI cable back into the Korg. And I, I did this so that uh, I actually had a keyboard to control my note inputs instead of using the pads. As a, as a keyboardist and a musician, I I prefer, if I'm playing chromatic notes, to do it from the keyboard and not do it from the built-in pads. And that's uh, the second scenario here we're using. And that's basically the only reason I have this one up is how I'm controlling the Electribe from a keyboard. So for anybody out there who is a keyboardist, 
you will, will appreciate having a keyboard hooked up to the Lect Drive so you can control nate, note data. Now you can also control any of the pads by simply changing the MIDI channel. And the, the Reface DX had a very beautiful interface, very simple, beautiful interface for MIDI. I could call up MIDI and easily change ch channels 1 through 16 very quickly. So as I change channels 1 through 16, the core get, by default, all the pads are set up from 1 through 16. So pad 1 is MIDI channel 1, pad 2 is MIDI channel 2, and so on up to pad 16 is track 16 on the Korg and it's also MIDI channel 16 so all I have to do is change push one button change the MIDI channel and I'm feeding back my MIDI data back into the Korg for playing notes or for playing drums if you wish now the drums sometimes I rather use the pad to play the drums instead of the keyboard so you still have that option you can just play them directly off of the Korg and that's uh, mainly the reason I have this one up, since I'm not going to demonstrate it with, uh, with an audio music demonstration like I did the first time. And here we have the third demonstration, or the third MIDI Connections and this one is identical to the first one we did with the casual controlling clock and note data but I've also thrown in a keyboard the uh, Yamaha keyboard in the upper left that's the uh, MPV80 Arranger this keyboard has no 5 pin MIDI output it only has USB output something I'm uh, very disappointed very angry with the music industry for dropping these MIDI connections and adding USB. For some reason they think everybody that owns these keyboards are simply connecting them up to computers and they're not connecting them up to other keyboards. And I find that to be an extremely disappointing and I will never ever ever buy another keyboard that does not have the standard 5 pin MIDI outputs. It just does not interface with my system very well, especially when you're trying to play more key more keyboards. Uh, when you're planning to play more than one keyboard and one is out of reach, you'd want to reach, you know, you want to control that from another keyboard sitting in front of you. So for synth jams, these, these keyboards without MIDI connections, the 5-pin MIDI connections, are totally useless to me. And it's very difficult to, to use this, and I'm going to sell it if anybody would buy it. And I will replace it with uh, something like a Yamaha MX-49 that has the standard in and out MIDI. But we have this scenario because I still use, I can still use this. I just use my, my timing as a musician to play the arpeggiators. And I can even use this to run the, um, the arpeggio, but I can also use this arranger keyboard to use the arranger functions and the rhythm backing rhythms that are built into it. And the next slide is the same as the one we looked at, but instead of the Yamaha Piagero, we're in uh, upper left now. We're we're talking the Casio XW60 7600 arranger, and it's the exact same thing. There's no 5-pin MIDI connections on here, only a USB. So I cannot control other instruments directly with a MIDI cable. The, the only way to control other instruments with these non-5-pin MIDI instruments is to run them through computers and back out again, which doesn't work for me. So again, very frustrated. I have this keyboard that I could be running clock speeds out of and could be running the... Uh, pattern sequence utter. This one's got a very nice pattern sequencer that's that's up to 16 measures long. That's a 250 step, 256 step step sequencer that could be used but it's very difficult because I can't integrate it into the system with a MIDI connection. So again I would use this if I do use this one I would use it free running and try to manually time my other instruments with it.
But uh, for everybody else out there who doesn't want to do any kind of manual timing, this kind of configuration, if, you're, if your instruments do not have that 5-pin MIDI connection, you're pretty much out of luck. You'll have to run it through a computer and back out again, and for that you're going to need a powerful computer and a audio interface and all the goodies that go with it. Hopefully it'll work for you without too much latency or what's called delay, where you press a key and you, and you hear within maybe 500, 300 microseconds later. A thousand microseconds is a second. So maybe, maybe you're gonna, the delays I'm getting off of my dual, uh, dual processor Windows 7 computers running it through a DAW and back out again, the delay is around 400 milliseconds, which is just completely unusable. So I would have to buy a much faster computer, something maybe with more memory. I don't know what it really takes. It, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm simply recording straight to my Zoom standalone recorder, which records standard WAV files. And if I want to use a DAW, I will import those WAV files into the my DAW and work on them there. And that it ends our configurations. And I hope everybody understands what was going on here. Just remember that the red lines are MIDI cable, very simple MIDI cables. That's a MIDI out in this configuration, MIDI out of the XP, of the, uh, of the uh, Casio XWP1 into the through box, sending out to four different keyboards and modules the same signals. And that is my MIDI sync cable setup, and it allows extreme versatility by connecting and unconnecting instruments, and it also allows for complete freedom of playing by timing my own arpeggios with my musician skills. Thank you very much. Hope this has helped, and we'll see you in the next one.